Jerry C. Rockwell, and I'm a longtime musician and kind of a part-time web developer. That's kind of kind of why I got into this whole technology conference thing. And uh, I just thought I'd give you some, uh, just kind of hope this will be a kind of an entertaining sort of romp through my composing process and improvising process, and just so you can get an idea just how s some of the process works for a composer, or improviser, you know, whatever you, want, whatever you want to call some of us musicians who just sort of make it up on the, on the, the uh, spur of the moment. Um, I, I've had my training at Ohio State University uh, uh, School of Music, Department of Jazz Studies. I was a jazz guitar major back in, well, I graduated in the winter quarter of 89 and um, and great experience, but uh, still at, at the core, pretty much a folk musician. I've built, uh, built these dulcimers. Uh, this is one I built and been doing it for about 35 years or more, something like that. And um, a lot of the experiments I'm doing now in my home studio, some of which I'll play for you here. I have a little uh, thing I'm going to be playing along with. Um, they're, they're basically... Um, uh, at this point, electroacoustic instruments, because I strap a, I strap a magnetic pickup over the over the dulcimer, and that gives me a, access to a whole bunch of signal processing and a whole bunch of things. I wasn't able to really make that work out very well for this particular, um, for this particular demo. But the sound of the acoustic instrument is great, and I'm also going to be using some acoustic guitar on the CD. You'll hear some experiments in my studio where I've actually done some some electric recording and whatnot. So. I hope this will be kind of entertaining, um, uh, you know. And I'll I'll try to leave some time at the end, and I can fill you in on more of my uh, more of the specs of my studio or how I go about making my tracks. And uh, I just want to say, just one of the, in the beginning, it's just one of the the wonderful things about being a musician these days is that if you've got a little home studio, you know, like I do, I record on an old Mac. Um, you know, every day is a chance to make another kind of CD of ongoing process work. So music, for me, is very much a process. And I've got now, since I've been up and running with my current studio uh, for about, oh, probably six months, something like that, I have, I can see day by day, week by week progress for what I'm doing, you know. So I can really see music as a process. And I, and I as I say, I hope, I hope I can give you some insights into that. Uh, most of the stuff I'm going to be doing, a lot of the stuff I'm going to be doing and playing around is what I consider really groove-oriented music, where I, take a, where I take a very simple structure, like one of the ones I'm doing is Skip to My Lou, you know, the simple folk tune everybody knows, you know, Skip to My Lou, My Darling, you know, uh, well-known folk tune, but I just totally transformed it to take it into something, a completely different area, and just to give you, just give me an idea of some of the rhythm behind it. And there's 
all these like kind of little grooves. That was the first one was kind of a 12-8 groove. I'm going to show you on the on the the board there. First one was a 12-8 groove, and then I went into a more Latin straight eighths groove. And um, uh, the basis of all this stuff, I better go over to the uh, go over to the board here. Okay, great. All right. Basically, what you got here is a is a reference structure. What I call a reference structure. Basically, you got You got basically two measures on a D chord, and then two measures on an A7 chord, back to two measures on D. These are just slashes, just basically quarter notes. Four beats to a measure. Another match two on D, and then you wind up com coming back home, you go. So let me just do that for you on the dulcimer. If I want to do something, if I just want to emphasize, which you'll hear, you'll hear somewhat on the on the recording too. Just want to emphasize two and four. <laughs> There's D now A seven that D bum D Dum D Dum Bum Bum D Bum D Bum Okay? And that was that was a straight eights feel. I'm gonna keep this is this is one of the things you can come away with here is is the difference between a, a twelve eight or a kind of a swing feel and what I just did there, which is straight eights. The straight eights is basically you have every beat is divided into two equal points. So you've got one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and it's very binary. The beat is you know. And then the 12 8, which is actually what I'm going to start off with on the recording, is uh, just each each of those beats is divided into three. So basically you got A little faster. A little syncopation in there. Beat it up, a dum ba da dee da 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 you can make all with syncopations. Syncopation is basically just just bringing in a beat like a half beat early is all it is. I won't go into too much detail, but um, let me get the, the the tape going. And what I generally do on my a lot of my multi tracking is a. I'm a very avid guitar player as well as dulcimer player. What I like to do is play either electric or acoustic guitar. Again, if we had the electric working right with some of the technical details, I'd probably be playing that. But the acoustic will work in a pinch. And uh, let's see how we're doing here. OK.
these are synth tracks that I just basically I call this an enlightened click track, and that's the that's the title of my brand new blog I started about a week ago. So. That's basically what I did there. But one, one of the main focuses I, I, I want to put out here is that I'm trying to move from the identifiable melody that you all know, like dum bon dum bon, to someplace else. I don't know where else exactly, but you, you can you can take any melody and you can sort of kind of extend it on either end, make it go up a little higher than the highest point or a little lower than the lowest point. Like uh, you know, here here's you, here's you got your so I can go. So that's the, almost the same thing as. I'm moving around the beat some. That's that's important. Rhythmic displacement of the melody is some, and then just like you know, like I say, extended, uh, you know, noodling, whatever you want to call it. But so one of those things that's nice, if you can keep the landscape of the melody, so everybody sort of identifies it, has something to hang their hat on. 
you know. I, I think that's really cool. Um, now this next thing, I'm sort of adding layers. This next thing, you'll hear electric guitar playing a phrase and right in the beginning, I guess, and those, those little phrases go throughout the whole thing and it gives me a chance, it ties the whole thing together I can play the melody and I can also sort of weave off and see what this one sounds like This, this is the complete one. This this has a lead part too. That's kind of question and answer. comes a Latin version. You'll see how different it, the feel is, completely different. A little faster, and here's just the straight eights. There's the two and four. It's always fun just to get geography of the measure. Now 
on electric dulcimer, when you hear coming in here, it's kind of a two-handed tapping technique where I'm hammering and pulling with two hands, which is kind of fun on electric dulcimer. out toward the end there you get some different inflections right it sounds completely different that's the blues element you know I'm adding some blues notes there there's some a little electric dulcimer sort of doing these little chops same tracks I'm just kind of building layers now taking it someplace notes on top. of the Latin version has pretty much the full thing, a lead in it and everything. Dialogue there. 
dialogue is always nice. Get one part talking to another. That's, that's pretty much skip to my loo. Now, you know, like I say, that's pretty much where it's at right now in time. And I have, I brought along with me a CD. I got a stack of CDs that I made, basically an April 8th special, you know, CDs that, you know, if, if you're interested, I got them for sale. And uh, basically, it's a retrospective of a lot of older stuff, some, some pure synth work. It's got this stuff on it that you're hearing here. The complete versions, not the built-up stuff that I did, but the complete versions and just a whole bunch of really pretty wacky stuff that I've done over the years. That since I played for a lot of folk audiences, they can't. There's no way they can relate to most of that stuff. But maybe maybe some of you folks might might get off on it. I I still enjoy listening to it. I you know a lot of stuff I go back and listen to. I think. What was I thinking then? Whatever. But some of this stuff is it's it's pretty interesting. I think. Okay, um, I want to leave enough enough time for questions and stuff. Um, I got another another uh, big bunch of tunes here. This sort of uh, um, the cold rain and snow, which is also uh, uh, it's an old it's an old uh, traditional thing. It's uh, Grateful Dead did it and jammed off it for a long time. Uh, it's also known as Sugar Babe or Red Rock and Chair is another name for it. And, and I've got I've got some of the tracks here, and then I merge into my really strange version of Little Maggie, which is a bluegrass standard. But you'll never recognize it as Little Maggie because I got it from a banjo player back in the '60s, and it's just it's a wacky version of Little Maggie. So yeah, let's see. There we go. Yeah. 
Here comes little Maggie. That's your uh, Cold Rain and Snow and Little Maggie. And then we're going to read that. Just an example of electric dulcimer. This is this is the dul this is this same dulcimer with the pickup strapped on it. Uh, you know, I covered covered some of the main ground. Um, 
if you all have any questions or any uh, any comments, or or uh, I can provide you with some details about how the how the uh, the the percussion tracks are recorded and all that. I'd be, be, be able to go into as much detail as you want. <laughs> um, one, yeah, go ahead. I think it's very rare, it's very rare to see a union between you know, folk music and jazz. Folk music and jazz and jazz and group, yeah. That's, that's a nice observation. That's how you came about to start dealing with the, the technological aspect of it. Yeah, right. You don't see too much, in, especially in folk music. Yeah, you, in folk music, you get a lot of people who are who really love just the pure acoustic sounds, and they're really, you know, to some extent purists. Although so they're not, they're not, uh, you know, there's the pure folk people who are so into folk and that, that that they they really frown on some things. They're getting rarer these days. So people are pretty open-minded, but some people that like folk and acoustic music, they just want the, their pure acoustic music. But from my standpoint, I grew up with rock and roll. I started playing guitar when I was like 15 or whatever, you know. And, and you know, I, I, I always had the electric guitar as kind of a real basis for what I was doing. When in about 1986, when I first got a, a Mac Plus, I got a a Yamaha DX7, you know, keyboard, and the whole MIDI thing was just getting up and running. I went just absolutely nuts for a while, just doing MIDI stuff. Just even though I had terrible keyboard chops, I I figured I worked my way around it, just like I am doing today. I can't I can't play a keyboard to save my butt, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, so 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 basically, you know, I, I I come at a lot of this through the through the avenue of MIDI, and. You know, now you know. Fast forward up to the future. Now the only times people are using MIDI on software instruments that are sitting right on their iBooks or their their laptops or whatever. It's just awesome with all the processing power now. All of the the, the, the instruments are on the computer. Well, I can't afford a computer like that, so I've got you know my my, my setup back home is a is a 7300 Power Mac with with a 300 megahertz G3 upgrade in it, and I have a I have a uh, um, a DigiDesign Audio Media 2 card, which is a nice audio card made by the same people that make Pro Tools, and I'm running Pro Tools 5 on it. And yeah, I got 512 megs of RAM, which that's very happy with that. Um, you know, I've got a, I've got a really just just to put the the, the audio on, I've got a hard drive that's 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 a you know a, a, an ultra wide SCSI card, one of the PCI slots. All three PCI slots are full. I got a firewire card so I can do my burning, firewire burner. I've got a I've got the the ultra wide SCSI card and then and then the, the audio media two card. So it's all the you know the, the slots are all maxed out. But you know it's really not that bad. I mean, you know, it's it's you know I what what I need now to get more professional quality recordings is a good mic preamp. If I had a good mic preamp I've I've got a fairly good uh, AKG C1000, which, you know, would would be at least starter level for for some of the acoustic stuff. But, you know, um, I you know it's a good question about the interface with with the you know the the technology, but it goes it just goes on and on. I just weave in and out of the, you know, the, of that stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, the, the, these instruments I build. This is going to flip people out. I mean, I build these with totally non-electric hand tools. The only power that I use is a drill. It's like a Black and Decker, you know, hand drill, just because it makes things a little easier. But I just cut out with coping saw and you know scraper blade, and I'm like an old world cabinet maker. That's that's how these things are made. They're made pretty much one at a time, and they're. Pretty high end. They're pretty pretty pricey, and so the people who you know want these are ones that people who are stepping up to a high end. You know, dul dulcimers you can get for you know a hundred bucks. You can they made in Asia now. You know, they're just total total firewood basically for the most part. And there's a lot of good hand builders that are charging 150 bucks too. They make a pretty nice hand built dulcimer. So you know. But uh, I've also built some, actually built some humbucking pickups right into them with tone and volume controls. But, the, you know, as they say, the cobbler's children have no shoes. You know, I, I don't have one for myself, so I, I just strap on the, 
I strap on a, a Bill Lawrence pickup. One of the nice things about strapping on the pickup is I can move it anywhere where, where, I, where I want. Back here, it gets a little bit more of the treble and the more colorful sounds. And up here, you get the bassier, a little warmer sounds. So that's kind of nice. I don't have a tone control, but I, I, have the, I can vary the, the location of the pickup. And you know, dulcimers are going through a tremendous revival. These things, there's a lot of people really playing the heck out of these things now. It really is pretty amazing. Um, there's there's a guy named Steve Seifert, uh, who's just a, he's about 31, 32 now, but he's just mind blowing what the kid, kid can do. I mean, he's just just phenomenal. Um, but there, there's actually quite a scene of dulcimer players. Um, not many are as groove and pop oriented as I am. I'm kind of, you know, that's kind of, well, that, that, that's kind of my new thing. I'm, I'm more into that now than, than I have been in the past. But I've been, I've been just about everywhere with, with the dulcimers, just try to done everything that I could possibly think of that made any sense or didn't make any sense, as the case may be. Microtonal, right. I made microtonal dulcimers or, or microtonal zithers in the shape of dulcimers with 31 frets to the octave and things like that. That's nice for academic purposes. And you know, audiences really get, they really like the idea of it, but somehow, huh? What is microtonal? Microtonal is basically when you have, like, you know, you have basically on a guitar, you have 12 frets to the octave. If I had 24, that would be considered microtonal. In other words, dividing the octave more than more than 12 times, you know, into 31 equal divisions of the octave is a very popular one and has some very nice intervals within it. And that's one of the ones I built. It's also a 19 tone. 19 equal divisions of the octave is nice too. How long does it take you to make? What one of those? Yeah. Uh, probably about a week. Probably you know about. It varies. It depends on the depends on the model and how much I'm putting into it or whatever. Any other uh, any other questions or or, or comments? Or? Thanks for listening, and I appreciate appreciate your uh, your ears and thoughts and. Like I say, I, I never know where any of this stuff is going, but it's a, a the, the most important point is that it's a process, and the process changes. Music is more like a process than anything else because you know eventually you got to sign off on a CD maybe, and you got to maybe have that CD produced and have some really wonderful graphics for it or whatever. But I find myself just continually pushing and just pushing and just pushing, and I, I love I love that that feeling, you know. I guess a lot of the arts are about that. I mean, just keep pushing forward, and it's just in process. Well, I, you know, if you want, to, you can talk to me anytime. I'll be around tomorrow and stuff like that. And um, if anybody's interest, interested in cascading style sheets, I'm studying you know, the past two or three, four years. I've been studying very heavily and looking forward to seeing Eric Meyer's presentations and stuff like that. But. Anyway, thanks thanks for thanks for coming.